Welcome back to another VTL flight review, and last time it was the Singapore KL Lake, but now for the return. What's the VTL experience like, and what is it like to travel right now? Tune in to the end of this video to find out. Hey guys, after a great week in Kuala Lumpur, it's an absolutely wonderful place. It's time to head home. Kuala Lumpur being the first place that I visit amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, it holds a very special place in my heart and um, it's a beautiful country, highly recommended. Anyways, today it's time to head back to Singapore on board SQ107 on an A350-900 and um, I'll also be flying the vaccinated, vaccinated travel, travel lane lanes. of VTL flights so um, I'll show you what the overall process is like and whether it's worth doing. So without further ado, let's hope for clear skies ahead and a great flight. Starting in Kuala Lumpur, the airport is clean, though as Malaysia only has vaccinated travel lanes with Singapore as of time of upload, it is extremely quiet. Many shops in the main terminal area were closed. Fortunately, the Plaza Premium Lounge, which Singapore Airlines now uses for business class and frequent flyers, was open. For entering the lounge, let me walk you through the VTL process. Singapore requires a VTL pass, and vaccination documents should be saved online via notarized as well as the test results. Vaccination documents and PCR test results that are no more than 48 hours prior to departure are to be presented upon arrival at the check-in counters. Once cleared, there's no need to present them throughout the trip. Safe distancing and mask wearing is strictly enforced, with boarding passengers in economy class segregated into zones to prevent overcrowding. Right, now for the lounge review. It was a clean and comfortable lounge, with order to go food selection, good seating, clean toilets, charging points, good Wi-Fi, and some awesome apron views. Before we proceed though, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more great aviation content on the way. I also looked at flight radar in the lounge and got what is arguably the best surprise yet. You'll get a clearer picture at the gate. Right, let's go. So guys, right behind me down there is my VSMF, the 10,000 Airbus aircraft. So now that we are in the air, let's look at the Singapore Airlines Long Haul Business Class Seat, which is very nice. It is wide, plush, but had good support. The cabin gave off a nice warm vibe and had good privacy, plus all seats have direct aisle access in a 1x2x1 layout. On the international variant, Singapore Airlines removed the centre overhead bins since the side ones were easily large enough. This gives the cabin a more spacious feel. The seat controls were easy to use, and the seat was very adjustable. I got a bulkhead seat on this flight. While the drink holder and closable compartment was gone, 
what was left was unobstructed legroom, of which there was tons of it. At the side console, there was an adjustable reading light, a magazine holder, and the powerpoints. After which, a closable cubby area with a care kit. The tray table was large, sturdy, and a good working surface, though the positioning means that if you rest your arm on it, it's most likely that it'll open on you. In front of you, there was a large TV monitor, though not touchscreen, and the angle was adjustable. For non bulkhead seats, there was a closable cubby with a drink holder. The seat controls were clear, and there were three individual reading lights next to you. All in all, a luxurious and practical seat. I didn't get the opportunity to try out the bed, but basically the whole seat will fold over. The bed is wide at the top, though narrow at the bottom. As this was a short flight, there wasn't much time to review the IFE system. Apart from the lack of touchscreen and the clunky remote, the system is excellent with plenty of choice. The route map is cool, though there were no external cameras on any of the Singapore Airlines fleet. There was however live TV available. Wi-Fi was not available on this short flight, but is quick on longer flights but very expensive and charged by the amount of data. Even on this short flight, the service might not have been the best but still well above average from other airlines. On longer flights, the menu is displayed on the screen. Not so on this short flight. Welcome drink is now gone due to COVID, but at least the chicken sandwich I had on this flight tasted good as did the drink upon the meal. The crew were friendly, though not the most warm, but overall they still did a good job. So we're in the lavatory of 9B SMF, which is the most special A350. Let's have a look. So all in all, Singapore Airlines is a great way to fly even for longer flights and you should shortlist Singapore Airlines business if you want a good value for money and luxurious business class product. Upon arrival, it's straight via the VTR path in Terminal 3 into Immigration, then Baggage. And then a PCR swap at the tent white coloured outside Changi. As you would expect, the Singapore system was terrible. The tent had no social distancing, it was cramped, crowded, hot, sweaty, noisy, and rather unpleasant. The test was done in a hastily and terrible fashion. But finally, I was home. Here we are cleared to come home, where you have to quarantine basically at home for 6 hours. Uh, and um, you can't go out during this period of time or be charged under the Infectious Diseases Act. And about 6 hours later, with a negative test result, I was clear to resume normal life and roam around Singapore. Speaking of which, I hope you've enjoyed this flight review as well. Until we meet in the next epic voyage on a VTL trip, 
one team, one aviation, one skyhead.